Hey, I'm Steve. Uh, I'm an engineer at Abacus Labs. Um, at Abacus, we primarily write in Node. Um, so today, my talk will be around uh, what is Node, um, what advantages it has, uh, and then we'll start going into how to build a web app in Node and kind of interact with an API. Um, so this is a nice Node.js logo. Um, you can download it at nodejs.org. Um, they have Windows, Mac, Linux. You can download that any version you want. Um, so the first thing about Node is everything you write should be non-blocking. Uh, essentially, when you have one file system call, you can execute another file system call at the same time. So here's like an example of PHP code where things block each other. So in my example, I have um, we read a file, and then after when we read the file, we also want to get the contents of MLH. Unfortunately because maybe the file is way too large, I don't actually get MLH until after the file has completed loading into memory. Um, in that case, this is essentially what it does. It executes linearly, and theoretically, you know, let's say each and everything takes two seconds. So in total, this piece of code in PHP run takes about four seconds. Next, here's like a rewrite of exactly what I did before, but in Node.js. Um, here you can kind of like evaluate like everything is done with callbacks. So essentially what we're doing is I'm telling Node to read a file, and I say, when you are done, run this function. Um, so this way, these two calls, the one grabbing the website and the one grabbing the file can run simultaneously. Um, in essence, it looks like this. Um, you know, reading the file and getting the file, or reading the file and getting the site are instantaneous, um, and each thing takes two seconds. But because both are running at the same time, it only takes two seconds total. So, to summarize, uh, you never need to wait for I.O you can actually run multiple I.O. operations in parallel, depending on how you write your code. Um, now, if you wanted to write the same exact code, the blocking code in Node.js, what you would need to do is run a callback within a callback, which says essentially like the white, like, like the white space says first read the file after request um, mlh.io and then print the body. Um, so this is essentially the same code uh, that was in PHP. And now you're asking yourself, what is, what is this require magic? You've seen this in the previous slides. And you're just like, what is this require request? Like, what is this magic? What is it loading? Uh, good question. Require is actually a function of Node where you can actually include other modules. Um, the first common one being your own module. Uh, to define your own module, you have to do a dot slash, which tells, um, which tells you this is within the current file system directory or your project. Um, there's other modules that are provided by Node.js, such as the file system, FS. Um, these are like predefined, and you can look up the documentation of Node of all these different things that you can include. Um, there's also another way you can include modules, which is in a folder of your root project, or the root directory of your project called node modules. Um, and to make a module, uh, you kind of use this um, terminology of module.exports, and you place basically everything into it. And then you can include it in another file. Um, for example, I have name.js where I just print out my name, and then in my index file, I require name, and then I call the function with my name in it, and it should give me my name is Stephen Lou. Cool. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, kind of like the community space of Node, uh, which is NPM. So a lot of there's a lot of Node developers out there, and you don't want to write this 
same exact code over and over again. And you don't, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. So NPM is essentially Node Package Manager, which helps you install different node modules and dependencies that you can use in your code. Um, so we're going to now go into writing an application. So no more boring slides. Um, and we're going to use this uh, NPM package called Express, which is just another web framework. So I'm going to go into this really quickly. Um, first thing we need to do is I'm going to assume that you have Node installed. And you should have two commands, Node version and NPM. And those should be very good and installed. So we're going we're gonna to make a web app which communicates with GitHub. And it's going to be very basic. We're going to just grab data from GitHub, um, just some random repos based on whatever you search. Cool. So we're now going to build a, um, a Node app which interacts with the GitHub API. So in order to do that, we're going to start a Node uh, code folder. So in order to do that, we just you know make a directory, and then we there's this nice tool called Express, um, and you install that with npm. Um, so we, what we do is uh, npm install minus g express, which will install uh, the Express command line tool to uh, your command line. So now we have this nice tool, which now will just bootstrap your entire folder with the node application. Um, next thing we need to do, uh, if we start, we can run this by um, first installing the dependencies with npm install. And that's going to just install everything that Express needs. And then we can run npm start, uh, which will now give us a web resource that we can go to on port 3000 that looks exactly like this. So in basically about four command lines, you just built a web server. Um, so now we need to build the part where we interact with the GitHub API. Um, the way we do that is in the routes folder over here. You'll see two files, and we're just going to focus on index.js. And here, we need to install an NPM package, which helps us interact with the API like a browser. In order to do so, we just do npm install. Um, and that package is called request. And we're going to save that, so that way, when we install it on a new computer, we know exactly uh, that computer will know what dependencies to install. Cool. So since it's uh, now installed, uh, we're going to start interacting with the API. So in order to use it, we need to define it as a variable. And we require the request library. Now, as before, require will look in the node modules folder for that library. And now we can use it like so. And let me grab the link real quickly. And that is, you can change this to whatever API that you like. Um, and the second parameter here is just that uh, GitHub requires um, that we are like somewhat like a web browser. So we need to find the user agent. And that's just going to be called node. Um, afterwards, the third parameter of request is what returns data. So first one being the error, if there are any, the response object, which is the entire web request, and the body, which is the data that you want. Um, and, and then in here, we're just going to console.log. and just print it out to our console. Now, if I run the server again, and then rerun the request, it's going to show me just, uh, it's going to console log a blob of data. And this is essentially what GitHub is giving us. And now we just need to give it to the browser that we have. 
if you saw over here, it actually renders the request. It actually renders the template that you uh, made before it actually finishes getting the request. So in order to fix that, we want to move this res.render line inside the callback function for the request. And if we want to then give it to the browser, we're just going to go do reposit, uh, repositories and then just give it the entire object. Note that when you saw it in the console output, it is JSON. We just need to give it another parameter called JSON. And this just essentially tells request to um, treat the incoming data as JSON. We run the server again, refresh. You saw it took a little bit longer and it doesn't output data at the moment. So now, since we have all the repositories, the next thing we want to do is output the data into the browser. And the way we do that is we go into the views folder and modify this, um, this file called index.jade. Inside here, um, you saw title, which it's going to output the title. And in the next line, we're just going to write uh, pre equals uh, repositories. Run the server again. Refresh. And now it's going to show object.object. .object. So not very useful data at the moment, but we're going to make it better. Um, in order to do that, we're going to output the data again by just doing another console log and see what that request looks like again. And here we can see all the repositories in a nice and better form because we provided it saying request, please treat this as a JSON request. And we're just going to look at the data and just see if we can just output all the names that we see. Um, in here, in the object, there's this um, key called items, and then the items is an array of different objects. Cool. So now we go back into our view and, do, and just basically print out all the names. To do so, uh, we're going to do for repo in repositories.items. Inside here, we're just going to output the repo name. And it'll be nice and big font. Cool. Run the server again. Refresh. And now we have all of the repository names that we requested for. And that is a basic of creating an Express app.